guys in today's tutorial we're going to be making this beautiful cute ankara bag so i sure you watch to the end as i'm going to be telling you some of the challenges i encounter making this bag and do not forget that our online course will be commencing july we use this particular one to cut out the lining so the measurements are going to be the same thing with this the only difference is which is optional take notes is that i added about half inch extra because i want us to fold it at the edge here because this particular fabric i'm using for the lining is thick enough even if you don't fold you're still going to get the effect you want i'm going to be gumming or gluing the lining to it we are going to glue the lining to it and before that we're going to be applying gum right so i'm applying the gum i will apply to the edge here because this is the panel we're going to be fixing our magnetic snaps and lock because we are still going to be pulling the lining out later to fit our magnetic snap so i just apply the gum to some extent not completely with of stitching this part and fold it in like this ensuring that the lining is not seen over the external okay fold it in then you can clip them in place then once we've done it with top stitch or back stitch guys i've top stitched the material i'm using here is called matte and you can add a pocket to your bag the lining or in the interior part of your bag if you want if you want to know how to add pockets the video i just uploaded before this i showed how to add for this other main body i'm not going to be top stitching now so just top stitch just one part this one is where we are going to be putting our flap this is the side panel this is where the adjustable strap is going to be passing through i've already talked about the measurements and i'm using this day ring so once you've gotten it like this you wrap it with your fabric pass it through this part where there's a cut the part i'm going to be using pass it through like this so i'm just going to apply a bit of gum to hold it in place Bye. So you let it dry so once it has dry you're going to be clipping it in place okay so those pieces that is freeing out you can just use your spa glue put them inside i'm going to measure out where i'm going to be placing it the total length for the side part of the bag it's five and a half inches okay this is two and a half point one two okay this is the midpoint i'm just going to measure one and a half inches down so this is the half mark here so it's going to be around here so you have to measure it out in order to get a very straight work i'm just going to put some marks here one i'll put another one here and i'll put here so that by the time it's bending away from it we'll be able to adjust it i'll take it to the sewing machine and sew Stitch. So you have to sew before you put your line in, guys. I'm going to be fixing the flap for the bag. I've not gone the stabilizer to it. I'm going to be using two layers of synthetic layers. I've used those ones before. This one is going to be going to the middle of the bag. Remember, we've talked about the measurement in part one of this video. So place this on it. 
you are going to just take a measurement of it to get the midpoint of this. You can measure from here to here, you can measure from here to here. This round part is the front of the bag and the slighted one here is the one that is going to be going to the back of the bag. You can measure from anywhere. I'm trying to measure from the tip, all right? Tip to tip here. So the total measurement here is seven inches. The midpoint here is just going to be three and a half inches, which is six. So this one that is going to go across the flap, the total measurement for the width is two and a half inches. So you get it, the midpoint of it. So the midpoint is going to be 1.2. Take the midpoint and place it on the midpoint. If you are already experienced, you can just take it and you highball it. Use your tape root to ensure that the measurement from here to here is equal from the measurement from here to here. We are doing all of this to make sure that this one that is going to go across the flap is not going to be bent. It's, I'm going to eyeball it. This is the front. This one is going to be coming to the front. So I will advise you to invest on rulers. So I'm just trying to make sure everything is straight. Measurement from here to here is equal from the measurement from here to here. Okay, I'll put a mark here. So these marks that I've given to it are the marks that are going to guide us so that by the time we are sewing and it's moving away from the marks as we are sewing, we'll position it in place. Before I sew, I'm going to line it up. Cut out the lining. It's a matte material, mostly used by furniture makers. I use this for the exact measurements. We are not going to be folding any part of it. I'm going to apply gum. If there's any excess thereafter, you can always trim off. Where aligned. Where aligned. Okay. After sewing, we are going to be trimming this part off, but you have to sew first. If you want you can go ahead and trim it off first, but I'm going to sew first. Remember, we've made some marks here. These are the marks that are going to guide us when sewing. I'll place it like this. This one at the edge, I'm going to fold it like this. So hide it. Okay, you can leave it because it's already folded. It's not showing any raw edges. These are the lines that are going to guide us. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of super glue. Bits of it, I just add the middle. So it doesn't move away from it. All right, be careful when using super glue. It means I'm using a red thread for the up and for the down. Also, I have not interfaced it so that it will be easy for us to sew. Put of the machine here, this part of it is aligned to the edge of it. The cautious you take, all right? Just don't be in haste. Just do it gently. But these are external stitches. Backstage, I'm not sewing this part. Remember, we're still going to be sewing this to the main body. So I will not want to have two lines of stitches. So I just backstitch here and we cut. I'm just going to trim this excess fabric off. Make sure you trim straight. I will advise you to use a sharp scissors so you don't get rough edges. But it's going to be what i'm going to do i'm going to be doing the side panels first all right so we just apply gum here then put our lining in this case i'm using mats for the lining then i'll top stitch i'm going to fold remember i cut half inches in excess to fold at the top just to hide the raw edges then these notches we cut we'll sew it in place just the usual way we usually do in our side panels
the fold in the edge you wouldn't have to fold when you're using a thick fabric for lining take your clips okay. here to here it's point one point two i'm just going to sew on this then after sewing i will gum the lining to it then trim off so by the time we are sewing this side panel into the main body it's going to sew everything together so before then uh, i want to top stitch on it first These are the other orders and these are two day rings that we're going to need. I'm going to put gum here to hold it in place. Before then, I'll just measure it to see the two of them are equal. Okay. Put it aside, let it dry. So once it has dry, I'm just going to clip it in place. Size to it, I want to determine where I'm going to be sewing this so that you get a straight sewing. I basically did, I just clipped the size to the back. We've not sewn, I also clipped the flap to it. Take note, I've not sewn any of this. Mark it out, okay? Also, get the middle of it. So by the time we lay it flat, we'll be able to determine where the handles are going to be sewn on the middle. Okay, so we've marked it out now. Here is the mark that we have made. Okay, when I put the flap across the bag, the body of the bag, so these are the marks that I actually marked out. So from here, this mark is this line. I'm just going to mark because I wouldn't want this to start from the edge. Remember, we are still going to be sewing around the flap. So I'll we'll mark out one inch. It's going to start from here this point this one inch mark here mark around it which is going to act as a guide I'm going to be sewing now remember we've marked out where we want it to be placed and the edge of the foot is at the edge of it and i'm using a red thread i'm not going to back stitch just going to sew. All that you can do, you can put some glue at the down so it doesn't move. Okay. It. Okay, I'm going to sew this one to it. Following this mark, please don't move away from the mark. You can use a little bit of spark glue if you don't want it to move away. Be careful, spark glue can easily stain your work, so you have to be careful when you're using super glue. Then you press it down.
I'm just going to stabilize it now. I'm going to be trimming some parts of like this is extending to the edge i wouldn't want that so that by the time my chain is sewing you don't have issue so i just trim some parts off so we'll fix the lining we are going to be fixing two female magnetic snaps why cut your lining make sure you cut your lining exactly the same size because we are going to be using that exact measurement of the flap to get the measurement of this if you see this is a flap and it's going to be seen and you want to fold to hide the raw edges you are allowed to fold all you have to do is just to leave like half inch in excess if you are folding just make sure you apply a bit of comb and just fold everything in guys i'm going to be using centimeter here so you just take two centimeter two by two centimeters for the position of the magnetic snaps so it's going to be two by two centimeters two by two centimeters length two width two make it obvious okay then take my magnetic snap the middle of it is going to be at the middle of this mark cross mark then you press it down to get the mark so when you press it's going to imprint some marks there two line so I just use my pen to make it obvious. Okay, I'll do the second one. Get the middle and place on the middle of it. Then I'll press to get two marks. Then I'll use my pen to kind of emphasize to make the marks obvious. I'll take my seam ripper and cut. This is to make it secure. You can see how strong and secure it is now. So I have to turn it. I'm just going to fix the lining to it. Put it in place. So as I said, you can fold the edges by cutting it in excess. Then you fold it if you don't want these raw edges. We are going to be sewing around it. So once you so once you get here, you stop here, and when you get here, you stop here. I don't want to sew on top of this. Another trick you can use: is you actually sew the flap around first before you sew this one on top of the flap. In that case, the stitches here will be shown at the back. Start from this point, sew around it, and edit it. really want to sew this kind of design everything you are going to be using will be a bit light make sure you use a cheap board for this part instead of using a thick leather so that the layers will be kind of easy for your machine to sew through especially when you are using a black head machine but it's not a problem i'm going to take it to my shop when i have time i will sew use my industrial machine to sew it so just take notice of it so that by the time you are sewing you are not going to be having issues
to fit the magnetic snap to the main panel you write chalk on it like this then you are going to press it down before you press you are going to set it in a way you want the flap to be female magnetic snaps on the flap is going to imprint some marks on the main panel once you press it down so this is the mark so at the middle i'm just going to cross it here at the middle like this so this year we are going to be fixing our main magnetic snaps these two places this is the main magnetic snaps i'm going to be fixing two i'm sorry i'm supposed to use silver color you see this cross mark here you're going to place the middle of this magnetic snap on the middle of the cross mark so i'll press it down to imprint a mark there you can see the mark here right so i'm just going to use this to emphasize it they're going to do the same thing i'll press it down and once you press it that it prints a mark there then i will use a pen to emphasize the mark i'm going to take my seam ripper and cut on this mark take the main magnetic snap i'll push it inside all right so i'm going to use this this is a piece of synthetic leather i'm going to just cut on it with my scissors a bit I'm going to be using it to secure it in place like this i'll trim this part off so it does not get on the way of our sewing machine i'll fix the first one i want to fix the second magnetic snap so i'll cut just like i did before on that mark okay guys i want to fix the second one now I just put it inside like this. This is how it comes. I'll take one of it. I'll figure out where I want it to be. Yes, if you want to leave it here, okay, this way you want to leave it. You just draw. You're just going to draw a rectangular line on it like this. Okay. So this way you're going to be cutting on. But if you cut on exactly this mark, it's going to be small. But it's advisable you cut it smaller. If it's not going through, you can increase it. When you cut it bigger, in that case, the lock might start falling off. So cut it smaller. If it doesn't enter or if it doesn't go through, you can always increase. I'll cut a bit outside the line. Alright, I'll cut on it before I use scissors. It's better, just cut it with a seam ripper first. Then use a sharp scissors. My scissors is blunt but i'm still going to use it like that so i'm going to try it on it if it will go through keep on trying or it fits in i don't want to overly cut it all right i'm just going to put the cover i'll turn it so guys, I'm going to bend this down and bend this. You can use your armor to just eat it in place. Okay? Anytime you are fixing your magnetic snaps or your lock, always position your flap in place, all right, the way you want it to be. But if it's not where aligned, it's going to affect the final outcome. Mark the center out, so I'll cross it. Okay, this way I'm going to be fixing the other part of the lock and it's going to be on the main panel. I'm going to be fixing it here i'm putting the middle of it on the middle of this cross mark then i'm going to press it down to imprint a line then i'll emphasize it i usually do this so i'm going to cut on this line so i'm going to move the lining down i'm going to put this on this right Okay, so I'm just going to put super glue. You can use cello tape, you can use gum to secure it in place. You can also use a piece of this. So do whatever you can do just to secure it. Alright. Here is it. Okay, so once you've fixed it, this height is going to turn out. Okay, this is the bottom, right? This is it. Let me open it so you see what I'm all right i'm going to be top stitching on the other main panel take note that the reason we've not top stitched because we needed to fix this this this
fold it inside like this all right you fold the top stitch now using a red thread Alright, so this is it. This is the front. This is the back. Alright. Um guys, I was not able to sew this part of the bag. Just going to apply gum from this place to this edge. Do not apply on the flap. I'll also apply all around the side panel. I'm just going to put them together. I'll clip. Okay. Then I'll put a bit of super glue here. I'll keep it in place, guys. Then I'll just make sure this side is aligned is at the top before I start doing the red, which is very important. So you're going to get it right once you take the right measurement. I didn't sew this side, all right? We've talked about this, the handle of the bag, right? Remember I left like half inch allowance because we're going to be folding in the lining. If you don't want to fold in, you can just cut exactly the size of the external. I have used it to measure out the size of the chip ball I want. So I just placed this at the wrong side of the chip ball, then I, I drew around it. So this is the one I'm using as a measurement. So I'm just going to cut it out. So this is the handle guys so don't forget that we are trying to get the handle of the bag apply gum after applying gum you spread it out remember that i've cut out xx fabric for this for the lining all right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to apply gum so i can fold it in Guys, once you have gummed it, okay, you wrapped it. I'm just going to sew together, making sure that as you are sewing, you are sewing the lining too, not just the external. So I've put two line of stitches to pop hole. You first of all determine where you are going to pop the hole, then you make it like this. All right, then you mark it out. Take your hammer, use rivet if your machine cannot sew through. Take my rivet, I'm going to pass it from this side, okay? Then it will pass through this. This one is going to come. This round one is the one that is going to be seen outside. Okay, I'm going to secure it in place with this. I'm just going to eat, secure this in place. You can open your flap flat so it will be easy for you. You are going to bend it like this. Just make sure you bend it that you eat from the back. That will secure it in place. I'm not going to do it on my mat. This is it. So the next thing that is remaining is the strap that is going to go across it. All right. So I cut a piece of um, leather, a synthetic leather, one inch, 
and I just gummed it to this fabric. So this fabric is 3 inches in length, folded the two edges and fold it again to make it one inch. So in width it's one inch, in length it's 46 inches. So I'm going to be leaving a video where you can watch how to make an adjustable strap. I've sewn it. So to fit the adjustable strap, we are going to need two hooks and one adjust down. I'm going to take the hook, the first hook, I'll pass it through like this. Okay. So you just have to watch what I'm doing. So after passing it through, I'm going to clip it in place. Alright. So I'll take the other, I'll pass the this strap through it like this first. That is what I'm doing. You pass this through this. Okay, then I will move it back so there will be much space for me to work with. Then I will take the last hook. Okay, just watch guys. So when I take the last hook, I'm going to pass it like this. Okay, then bring this down. Then I will pull this part of this adjuster off. Okay, then I will pass this, this one through this bar that is separating them. I will pass it like this. Okay, I will now pass it down. I'll pass it down okay I'll pass it down then once I've done it this is going to be the final step then I'm going to sew this one that just passed to itself this is it right and this is this one is part of this so you are sewing it to itself like this take note you are sewing it to itself so before I sew, I'm just going to clip it and move it to see if it's going to move can you see can you see so if, that means you can adjust it so you have to do this first before you sew to ensure that you are doing the right thing simple as this if your machine cannot sew through you can use a rivet to just put it in place okay i'm sure my machine is going to sew through so i'm just going to sew so i will sew like a boss stitch here and i'm also going to sew this part of it so that's what is going to make up the adjustable strap So I've sewn the boss stitch, okay? So I'm just going to quickly sew this. So this is basically it. So this is the back, this is the front, this is the side, and okay, this is the inside. It's lined. So guys, there's something I want to point out about this bag, right? I want to point out some of the errors and difficulties. First of all, I wasn't able to sew the back of this bag. It was too thick for this machine, this black head machine to sew through, guys. I have to go and finish this with my industrial machine so this machine could not sew through it because it was too hard so i would advise you to use a lighter substance like the leather but synthetic leather board 